from northern Italy and I'm happy to be here to show some of the research we are doing up there in the mountains with you. Um, the research I'm going to talk is on Pinot Blanc. It was done together with a local cooperative, Tramin, and we focused on how different pressing techniques can impact on mass composition and the quality of Pinot Blanc. Um, that's how it looks like at home. Um, but the, we have a problem every harvest or before harvest starts, a winemaker has come to want to get advice how they should press, process their grapes. We produce about 70% whites in our region and a lot of this fruit is crushed from cooperatives. They work on a very high level, but still that means they have many presses. They take, they're very expensive. They bring them away, um, they bring them away during summer to bring them out for harvest and then nobody knows what they did last year or how they should use this modern and expensive presses. So um, it's a very important moment in winemaking but we have the feeling it's controlled by feeling and not by knowledge. Um, that's why we wanted to have a look on how um, different pressing techniques can impact on the kinetics that must is um, yielded under the press. And a second question is we get often is do we can use the whole must we, we get or should we use only the first run, the free run, the first fraction of the press or do we can use everything. Another thing um, we were looking at is is it somehow possible to reduce the press time to reduce the amount of presses we need in a winery? As this is very expensive equipment and we need it only for some weeks, it would be nice to reduce this these uh, presses. And of course how to adapt, do we need to adapt our pressing techniques, our winemaking in general to the terroir or to the grapes, the grape quality we get in. And that's where it is. Um, it's in the northern part of Italy. Up there um, people speak German. We are in the middle of the Alps. Um, we have a uh, very yeah, let's say a mosaic of, that's the annual rainfall we get, so we see it's, it's varying a lot among very small distances. And we also got quite a mosaic of different uh, geological bedrocks. You see on the right side, that's the Dolomites, that's calcareous soils. In red, around Bolzano, we have all this red thing is Borfür. Then we get some granite and schist. And in blue, that's the vine growing area. So we see it's, we have almost everything you can imagine. The study was done on two vineyards down here in the south um, on calcareous uh, uh, soils. And now, ah, oh, that was too fast. Um, that's the first vineyard. Um, we call it low. It was in a very valley, almost on the valley floor. Um, it's a 250 meters elevation and it's considered from the winemaker as a medium quality potential vineyard. The second vineyard, it's on the same slope. It's 300 meters higher. It's trained in a pergola and it's, although it's in a pergola, it's considered as a high quality um, vineyard. Um, the two places are different, the, the trellis is different, the soil is also slightly different, um, but still we wanted to see how um, we impact, how pressing can impact on grapes coming from lower elevation and from higher elevation. And that's how we did the pressing. The we used 100 liter, um, small scale, 100 liter pneumatic presses. Um, the first one, it's a very classic program we used. It's, if you buy a press, that's usually what you get with. That's a program pre-installed. You push the start button and it runs. Um, if we have a look at it, we see that's a time, pre I forgot to mention, that's, a pre that's the pressure, that's the time. The, pressure is increased, it's hold, then it's released, and we have crumbling, it means the, the tank, the pressure tank, it's rotating. And that's repeated again and again. We can see that that's a very classic program and we have many crumblings. It takes about usually around two hours to complete one press cycle. 
then we wanted to compare it with uh, so-called Cremant um, press technique that's used a lot for sparkling and rosé. It's gentle and if you have a look at it, we see that we have we build up pressure, we keep it, we build up pressure, we keep it, and we only crumble after one of this whole cycle is finished. So it means that's way more gentle, and we have only a few crumblings. But this technique takes about three hours, it takes longer. The last one, um, that's kind of, yeah, we try to imagine something different. So here we see, nothing happens, that means here we crush, we do a two hour maceration and then we press within 15 minutes, uh, we, sorry, within 30 minutes. So that's a very short press method and we wanted to see if, if that works, that would be nice to save some time during harvest where time is not that much available. Um, in the first part I'm going to speak about the analysis we did on the mast right below the, the press and then we also did some experimental wines out of this, uh, of this experiment. Okay, here we see the, the, the juice that runs off during the press. Um, you see here in the horizontal axis the time in minutes and we see completely different pattern as here this one starts after the maturation time two hours and then it's very quick. We see that um, we yield a little bit more uh, must in the classic and in the short press cycle than compared to the Cremant, to the gentle press system. That's also an important fact because if you lose 5% of must that can be important in terms of money for a bigger company. If we plot it uh, to press cycles and not anymore to minutes, we see that the press behavior, or the yield of the juice, it's not so different among the two. And we can, the next slides are always put on the press cycle to better compare to see what's happening. The first one um, we are going to see is um, pH. We see uh, for the lower vineyard, pH at the beginning 3.5 and then with the classic press program pH increases significantly faster than it does with other press systems. Um, for the higher vineyard um, about the same. If we have the two vineyards, if we compare the two vineyards, how they behave, the low one in blue and the high one in green, we do not see differences among the two vineyards. It means it depends more on the how we press than what we press. Um, we have about the same results for 2015. The only difference, 2015 was a very hot summer and harvest. And we have here in the low vineyard a very high pH already after crushing. And that's why the, the curve is not so steep and we do not get these big differences. Although in the high elevation vineyard we see pH is quite low, comparable to the year before. And we get the same pattern than 2014. Um, the next one I'm going to show is uh, polyphenols. Um, I do not can show all the different parameters we measured. We had malic acid, tartaric acid, uh, catechines, different things, but time is restricted. So we have a look to polyphenols. Um, first, in 2014, we see there's not big difference between the two vineyards in the beginning. And we see also that um, the, the gentle press system is the one that yields the lowest uh, amount of polyphenols, they remain quite stable throughout the press cycle, whereas the two other systems are a bit more rough and we get more polyphenols into the mast, especially to the end of the, of the press cycle. In 2015 we started a little bit higher, but still more or less the same, uh, the same pattern. Okay, um, what we expected from these observations was we hoped to see somewhere a jump in something to say, okay, let's cut here and then divide the mast into. We couldn't see it, it's something very steadily growing, uh, whatever it is. 
Um, then we did uh, some winemaking. Um, as we haven't found uh, a step in pH or polyphenols, so we, we decided to split it um, where about, when about 90% of the must was drained. Means we made, sorry, we made out of the first fraction of the must, we made one wine and then one wine out of the total composition of the must. We made uh, experimental wines, 20 kilograms of must, and we did everything in duplicates. And then we did a routine analysis and aroma analysis. And here we see um, a PCA of uh, the aroma analysis of the year 2014. And we see we can very, um, it's very nice to group the two vineyards. That's the low vineyard. That's the high vineyard, although there's two missing. And these are those two up here. And they're coming from the classical press program from the high vineyard. And we do not know why they are up there. Um, in the last slide, I'm gonna show some sensory analysis. We did about six months after harvest. Um, we see this is the high vineyard. And we see that um, the judges um, preferred the wine coming from the control, like here we have overall quality and they really preferred the classic press method, method over the other two. So what winemakers do until now, it's not so wrong for this vineyard. If you have a look to the low vineyard, we see that um, sensory analysis, although results are not, differences are not so big, we see that the fast press method was not was even better than the control and yielded in, in more exotic and less vegetal um, wines. And that's also more typical if, yeah, it's difficult with this term. Um, although judges preferred this, this wine coming from the fastest press method. That's quite promising to, to know. Um, with that, I come to the conclusions. Uh, what we have seen until now, we get a very similar juice extraction um, in terms of liters for the three press methods. And uh, kinetic is driven by press technique more than by vineyard or vintage. Um, I didn't show results of this uh, statement here. We have, until now, we have seen, we have never got a negative effect if we use the whole must and not only the first fraction. It was always better to use the whole thing and not only the free run juice. Um, the cold soak, also, so the fast pressing is in, for the low vineyard was a very promising technique because we could save time and even get a more interesting wine. And we need to, I think we, in the future, we need to better adapt our winemaking to what we get from our terroir or what we get from our uh, grape growers to better bring this quality into the wine. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much.